Hello again, and welcome back to Prophecy Truth Today. I'm Linda Cambeg, and I will be your speaker on this third part of The Beast from the Sea. And we'll be talking today about the little horn. Some people ask, why should we study about Bible prophecy? Well, we need to study Bible prophecy because it shows us what the devil is about and how we can be alert. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. We need to understand the tactics and the mentality of our enemy. As Corey Ten Boom pointed out, the first step on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. The Bible often uses the imagery of soldiers and war to describe the Christian life. The Apostle Paul urged Timothy to endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ. He also wrote towards the end of his life, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. We face a formidable foe. Martin Luther had it right when he wrote his great hymn, A mighty fortress is our God. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate on earth is not his equal. But John wrote to encourage us, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he, that is Jesus, who is in you, is greater than he, that is Lucifer, who is in the world. And Jesus himself said, Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The prophetic books of Daniel and Revelation work together in identifying the sea beast from Revelation 13. Remember, we've talked about the kingdoms and the end of each of these timelines, but let's focus now on the last part of Daniel 7. Okay, this is the dreadful beast spoken of in Daniel 7. It represents the pagan Roman Empire. Then I wish to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from the others, exceedingly dreadful, with its teeth of iron and its nails of bronze, which devoured broken pieces and trampled the residue with its feet. In other words, this was a very, very powerful beast, and its teeth of iron and nails of bronze was on the cruel side, too. And the ten horns that were on its head, and the other little horn which came up, before which three fell, and a mouth which spoke pompous words, whose appearance was greater than its fellows. Hmm, that's a strange-looking beast. So this little horn came up, and I was watching, and the same little horn was making war against the saints. That's killing and torturing the saints. And prevailing, winning against them. This is found in Daniel 7, 21. Until, Daniel 7 says, the Ancient of Days, that's God the Father, came, and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. Now watch this. Later at the Second Coming, when Jesus comes back to earth to redeem the saints, the time will come for the saints to possess the kingdom. Daniel 7.25, And he shall speak pompous, that's blasphemous words, against the Most High, and shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saint shall be given into his hands, the little horn's hands, for a time and times and half a time. 
In regular English, that's 1,260 years, sometimes called the Dark Ages. Okay, we have this terrifying beast, the Pagan Roman Empire. And it is replaced by 10 European countries. So it's no longer. But we have the 10 kings or the 10 horns that formed Western Europe. That's the 10 countries. Then a new power arose. And this little power, the Pope, comes up among these 10 horns. The Pope had these three little countries uprooted and destroyed, so there's no more trace of them. They are no more. Okay, we have some new things to put on this timeline. Now, the saints shall be given into his hand, the little horn's hand, for a time and times and half a time. That is for 1,260 years. You know, that Catholic church that began where the Pope uprooted three little countries grew in power. The church held life and death over a person. And they began to hold inquisitions. The Catholic Church established powerful inquisitions to root out and punish heresy, that is, anybody who went against the doctrines and the teachings of the Catholic Church, against the Pope and the Church throughout Europe. The Catholic Church employed civil governments, that's the kings and the princes, who they allowed to be in power to carry out her work of persecution, especially of putting people to death. The Inquisitions continued for hundreds of years and was infamous for the severity of their tortures, deaths, persecutions of Protestant Christians, of Jews, of Muslims, and as many as 50 million souls may have been killed during the 1,260 years of the Dark Ages. So how could a wound be inflicted on the Pope? But there came a time when Napoleon sent his general Berthier to arrest Pope Pius VI. In 1798, General Berthier took Pope Pius VI prisoner thus breaking the Catholic Church's 1,260 years of persecution and the stranglehold it had over Europe. The Pope was taken prisoner and put in jail. He lost property, he lost wealth, he lost rulership. That is, the Catholic Church did. So, is the wounded Pope started to heal when? Well, Pope and Benito Mussolini signed a historic pact. In 1929, the Pope's secretary and Mussolini signed the Lateran Pact. In 1929, the Roman Catholic Church and the state of Italy signed a peace treaty that ended civil strife in the country. The Lateran Accords were three agreements between the Kingdom of Italy and the Holy See that were ratified in 1929. The accords led to the Vatican becoming an independent state. This certainly was the beginning of the healing. So let's see if we can place this little horn power on our road map. Okay, we know that the pagan Roman Empire broke up into 10 nations into the ten, by the 10 tribes right about here. And starting in 538 BC, the Pope became powerful. The little horn came up and that Pope plucked up three of the horns right about in here. And the saints were given to the little horn's Pope's hand 
for a time times and half a time. That's 1,260 years. The Pope was making war against the saints and he was prevailing or winning against them until the Ancient of Days, God the Father, ruled in favor of the saints. And when that happened, the Pope was arrested and put in jail. Okay, that took place in 1798. Now the deadly wound was healed, or began healing, not completely healed, in 1929. I say not completely healed because the Roman Catholic Church still does not have the same power that it had before it was wounded. So please note, we have not yet placed the sea beast from Revelation 13 on this timeline, but we're going to do that in the next video. So let's see what we have. We have one wounded head and God the Father that ruled in favor of the saints in 1798. The Pope was arrested and was wounded by this action. And the healing of this wound started after the Lateran Treaty. And this fulfills Daniel 7.22. One more thing about this little horn power. He, the Pope, shall speak pompous, that is, blasphemous words against the Most High. Now, if we have one head speaking blasphemous words against the Most High, we identified it as a religious entity. But then I stood on the sands of the sea, and I saw the beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, and on his ten horns, ten crowns, and on each of his seven heads, notice the plural, a blasphemous name. So we have not only one head speaking blasphemous names, we have seven heads speaking blasphemous names against God. The seven heads in Revelation 13.1 have to be seven religious heads that speak blasphemous words about the Most High God. And we'll talk more on these seven heads in the next video. We hope this Bible study was a blessing and gives you food for additional study. May God richly bless you from Prophecy Truth Today.